Ladies and gentlemen, um, I regard this as a, such an important evening that I live in, in just outside Edinburgh. And when I was leaving, my wife says, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to Glasgow. And she said, again. In fact, um, I've done a lot of work with Glasgow over the last year in terms of Glasgow's history and its links with the West Indies or the Caribbean. I, I was born in Jamaica, and in fact, if you go down the road, there's a Jamaica street. And of course, it's one of the oldest streets in Glasgow. It was built in 1763. So Jamaica has had a long history with Scotland or with Glasgow. And that is very important because when I used to speak to my students about belonging, I say, for example, we're sitting in a wonderful room. Does anybody know anything about it? It's history. In fact, if we did, we all share a part of this room. The fact is that the ladies are dressed in cotton. There is silk, um, cotton and silk. There is marble. There's the carpet. All these things link this room with all of us in this room. That is a sense of belonging. The fact that if we feel where we are, we are a part of it. That's belonging. If we share a history with this country, that is belonging. And the interesting aspect about history, it cannot be changed. We cannot change the past, but we can change the consequences of the past. And one of the most pernicious consequences of the past is racism. The fact is, in the 1700s, that's when racism be began in earnest because the philosophers in Europe tried to classify people. First, they tried to classify them on the basis that they were different species. But that didn't work because different species do not produce viable offsprings. And all human beings do. So they, have to do, they had to do something else. So they devised the concept of race. And the concept of race is in fact related to serious prejudices in terms of intelligence. The point is that the construct of race is artificial, it's made up, it's a myth. The problem is, if we look at our society, no matter what anybody says, race influences representation. And one of the problems we have in this country, not just in Scotland, but in Britain as a whole, we have a diverse society with extremely bad representation. And if you have a diverse society without diverse representation, you have a society that's inefficient. And our society is going to remain inefficient as long as we do not have diverse representation to manage this diverse society. And one of the aspects that limit representation is this concept of race, which we must try and change. It is extremely difficult to change. When somebody said to me the other day, what is an example of this? And I said, the N-word is from slavery. That is a consequence of racism. And the point is, it's extremely difficult to correct aspects of race which becomes embedded in how we see other people. And for example, an example of how you deal with that is how Glasgow University has. And last year, 
I helped the university to look at its history. And Glasgow University employed a couple of its staff, academics, and they looked at the history of Glasgow University and found in a report which they published that Glasgow University benefited from slavery to the tune of about 200 million. And the university published the report. They made contacts with the University of the West Indies. They've set up a reparative justice program with the University of the West Indies. They also have allocated 30 scholarships for African Caribbean children. On the 23rd of August last year, we met in the university and the university unveiled a plaque in the chapel and the plaque reads, this university benefited from people who were enslaved. And this plaque commemorates the suffering of those people. Now, if Glasgow can do that, we want all the other institutions in this country to do the same. This city, a couple of weeks ago, we met in the room just down the road, or just around the, outside that door, and the leader of the council said, this city is going to look at its history and its history with slavery. And they've employed an academic, and that academic is going to look at the history of this city and its relationship with chattel slavery in the Caribbean. Already, Cambridge University has decided that they're going to have a look. Bristol has employed the first black female professor of history to look at their slave history. Liverpool is going to have a look. Birmingham, I was in the other day. They're thinking about it. The point is that this city has been the first light in looking at its history and deciding that something should be done. That is belonging. The fact is that if you walk down the road, there's a big building called the Gallery of Modern Art. It's Goma. What is Goma? Goma is the house of a slave owner. It's a house, not an institution. Sitting outside Goma is Wellington. His brother was governor of Mysore when, in fact, the Sultan of Mysore was executed. The point is this city has a historical link and if you have an historical link with anywhere, you belong there. Nobody can tell you to go anywhere. And finally, what I would like is instead of telling people to go home, we should be telling them to come home. Thank you.